Pex A versus Pex B. Which is better? I get asked a lot of times when I go to do jobs, are you putting in PEX or are you putting in copper? Well, to be honest, I'm getting to where most of the time, PEX A might be the best decision. So what are plumbers using more these days? We still use a lot of copper. Where I'm at in the North Central Texas area, for repairs, we're normally going and making repairs on an existing copper system. We still use a lot of copper. But more and more, we're looking at the idea or playing with the idea of using PEX. Now, we also go into a lot of new home builds that are having problems. They're not getting enough water to certain places. The problem is PEX B. And I wanna explain why. PEX A and PEX B, the pipe is pretty much, as you can tell, the same size. Okay, I mean, literally, man, they're about the same. Here's the problem. PEX B uses a reduced size fitting. What I mean is that fitting is designed to go inside the pipe. You put a clamp ring on the outside and squeeze it to keep it on there. What happens then is whatever size that fitting reduces to, that's the flow restriction you get. PEX A, on the other hand, also known as Upanor, is an expansion. First of all, you put a ring on, then you expand it, you put a full size fitting in there and it clamps down on it, forever trying to get back to the size of the pipe that it is. So it is continuously improving its connection. It's constantly trying to tighten down for the life of that fitting. Now both PEXs are cross-link polyethylene. That's what PEX is. There's PEX A, PEX B, and PEX C. And the PEX is derived from the way that it's chemically processed. The process that it goes through all the way up to radiation for some to get it to where it needs to be. PEX A has a shape memory, meaning it is forever trying to get back to the size that it is, the way that it's shaped. So when you expand it, you are literally taking it outside of its comfort zone, sticking a fitting in there, and it's forever trying to shrink back onto that. That, to me, is a good connection. PEX B, you get a clamp, a ring on the outside that you clamp down on it, and if it ever rusts, if it ever freezes and expands, it's not gonna shrink back. At least with PEX A, it'll shrink back. PEX was invented in the 60s and then actually improved in the 70s. In the 90s, we got Upanor Aqua PEX, and that's really what we're using today. So here's my deal, people ask often, what are the big differences? It's more than just the way it's made, it's the fact that PEX A is more flexible. You can actually bend it, you get tighter radiuses. It normally doesn't kink, but if it does, you can take a heat gun, heat it up a little bit, and actually get it to return to its shape. PEX B, once you kink it, you need to cut that out because that's never gonna get back to full line size. Now, there's a lot of different things, but here's the biggest problem that we run into as a service plumbing company. People that put in PEX B do an entire house this way and they don't oversize the system. Now, when you put in copper pipe, the copper fittings are the full size as the copper pipe. You don't get a big flow restriction there. Now, you may get some on a 90, but it's not because it's a flow restrictor built in. When you put a fitting in the PEX B pipe, it actually reduces the flow and can lead to problems. Just a couple of months ago, we went out to a new home build and the buyer was upset because they weren't getting near the flow they thought they would get at the hot water in the master shower. The problem is, by the time it reduced down at the water heater, you reduce flow there. Then you reduced it again all the way everywhere that there's a joint going over to that shower. Now, we were able to increase the size of some of the lines, and yes, we put in Upanor, but we increased the size of the lines all the way from the water heater to the shower to give them the flow that they needed. If you're gonna use PEX B, just remember that. Make sure that you oversize your system probably just one pipe size and you'll be fine because that would make the fittings about the size of the next smaller size copper pipe. Another good thing about Upanor PEX A is the expansion and the burst pressures. It won't burst, not till over around 500 pounds, meaning it's tested up to a 470, 490, somewhere around in there. Here in Texas, the reason we don't use copper in the attics is that when it freezes, we don't want people's copper lines to freeze and burst. PEX A has a better capacity to expand and contract. Remember, it's constantly trying to get back to its size. So if it expands when it freezes and that pressure builds up in there, when it thaws out, it'll come back down. That pressure will actually come down once the pressure's gone and shrink back to its normal size. A good thing too about PEX A, it actually has a better curvature, meaning it's a tighter area in which you can make a turn, okay? 
Now, like I said about PEX B a while ago, if you bend it too tight, what's gonna happen is it's gonna kink. Now, I know it's not here right now, but if it stays like this eventually, it'll kink. And when it does, you're gonna have a problem. You can never get that kink out no matter what you do. At least with PEX A, if you do get a kink in it, and yes, it will kink, Literally, you can just take a heat gun, heat that up, and it will return to its normal shape. So what are the benefits of it? Well, the fittings cost more, okay? They do, but your labor. Your labor is one of the biggest factors in any job that we do. And to be honest, you don't have to clean it. You don't have to prep it. You don't have to do a lot of things. You don't have to get a torch in here. So if you're working in an area that a flame is a problem, PEX A is even better, or any PEX for that matter. But I like PEX A because there's no flow restriction. It stays full line size. A good thing too is stress cracking and chlorine. Here in Texas, we had problems with polybutylene pipe here a while back, chlorine resistance. PEX A is resistant to chlorine 100%. Now that's a good thing. Now PEX B, look, it's all resistant to chlorine, but we don't wanna have that problem in the future of we're having to go in and change pipe from the past because we had problems with it, with our chlorine in the system. We know we've gotta have chlorine in the system to keep mold, mildew, and bacteria out. Why is PEX A better? Here's the deal. PEX A is gonna end up replacing copper. You can bury it underground. It's resistant to the ground. It's resistant to the concrete. You're not gonna have those problems. When you come through a concrete slab, still protect it. Wrap it with six mil tape. Wrap it with something to protect it coming through because it's still gonna move a little bit. You don't want tears and holes in the pipe anywhere where it goes through something like that. The water quality is still amazing, just like copper. Look, you're gonna get good, clean, pullable water through either one of them. You just wanna make sure you're doing your customers right, your homeowner right, by not restricting the flow on anything that you do. If you use PEX B, there's nothing wrong with it. Oversize it. Don't create a flow restriction in your repair or in your piping system. And guys, as a service plumber, we fix that a lot. Now, good things about it, it's flexible, so you're gonna use less fittings. Say you're laying it out underground, you're looping it up, you're doing a line overhead, whatever it is. Maybe you don't have to use a 90. Maybe you can actually just make a curve. And you can do that with either one of them. Good thing about both of these, compared to say CPVC or something, no glue, no primer, no chemicals like that. Literally, PEX A, you put the ring on first, then you expand it, you stick your fitting in there, it seals back up, it's good to go. PEX B, put the ring on there, get it where it goes, crimp it, it seals up. I know PEX B people say you can come back and recrimp it again if it didn't crimp good or if there's a leak there. That's a possibility. On PEX A, you can actually heat it up with a gun, cut that ring off, take it apart, put a new ring on, expand it again, put it right back together. Say you, you know, on a copper joint, you've got flux on it and you wait too long, it turns green, you've got to take it all apart and clean it up again. Upanor PEX A, if you don't get your joint together quick enough, say you forget, say you expand it before lunch, you come back, you expand it again, now you put it together, now it's ready to go. One last thing that I like better about the Upanor than I like about PEX B, when you put your fittings together on PEX B, say it's a horizontal fitting and you left your crimp ring on there. If you don't crimp it, you can still see that ring. You may look at it from a distance and think, okay, that was done. You cannot put PEX A or Upanor together without expanding it first. That way that fitting will go in where it goes. So you're not gonna have fittings that just blow apart because they didn't get put together properly or the crimp didn't get made. There's a lot of reasons to like PEX A versus PEX B. Do me a favor, leave a comment below and tell me what your favorite reason is. I like it. I think PEX A is probably gonna end up taking over completely because it's lower than the cost of copper and labor is so much faster putting it in. Anyway, leave me a comment down below and let me know which one you use. Do you use PEX A, the expandable, or do you use PEX B or C? And if you do radiant heating, are you using the right PEX for it? I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.